EN71 is a set of standards harmonized under the Toy Safety Directive. So what that means is that if you are selling, well, primarily manufacturing or importing toys uh, in the European Union, then ensuring compliance with one or more EN71 parts is actually mandatory. So in this video, I will introduce you to what EN71 means when it comes to lab testing. So step one is to identify the EN71 part or more likely parts that may apply to your product. So EN71 in practice, as I said, is broken down into different parts. EN71-1 covers mechanical and physical properties. That means small parts, sharp edges, stuff like that. Things that, let's say, safety aspects from a design and construction perspective. Okay, so it's very fundamental. Other than that, you have substance restrictions. You have symbols, graphical symbols, warning signs, and so on. I think that's EN71-6, so it's actually not just about testing. Then you have a number of parts on the EN71 that are applicable to specific products, specific types of toys. I think finger paints, that's, that's one. Chemistry sets, trampolines, so quite specific. But in any case, step one, is to assess the EN71 parts that apply to your product. Now, long before you can actually go ahead and arrange third-party testing, you may actually need to take a step back to the drawing board. If you're currently designing a toy that's going to be imported and manufactured in the EU, then you may need to implement certain elements of EN71-1 into your product design to ensure that you are that the product is compliant with the design requirements with the mechanical properties and so on otherwise you are running the risk of essentially mass producing a product that is inherently non-compliant and if so there's no EN71 testing procedure in the world that can make that product compliant so when it comes to the matter of arranging testing, what you should do is to reach out to a company, a testing company more specifically, that has experience that is advertising uh, testing services corresponding to EN71. Some of these companies include Kima, Intertech, Bureau of Veritas, SGS. You may have heard about these companies before. My advice is that you reach out, you share a specification. You need to share, when I say specification, you need to share technical drawings, at least renderings, that's a bare minimum, bill of materials. And this is for, for, for the testing company to accurately assess the EN71 parts that apply to the product. If not, if they, if they don't have the information they need to make this assessment, then they may not quote a uh, testing procedure that is that is satisfying the requirements, meaning that the product is not being tested for all C EN71 parts that actually apply. So once you've shared this information, you can expect a testing quote usually within one to three days, okay? And in this testing quote, the testing company should also clearly communicate which EN71 parts that they think apply to your product. Now, I, I know I said you need to consider this step one, and that is because you can't wait until you're ready for testing before you make some sort of assessment. As EN71 is not just a matter of passing the test, but has a direct impact on the design and construction of the product. Nonetheless, it's always good to get that, say, complementary assessment from a qualified testing company. Okay, so one doesn't necessarily exclude the other. So on the topic of costs, that's, that's the big thing. So EN71 testing isn't exactly free. You might be looking at anything from three to 500 US for very basic testing. That would be maybe in a scenario when you have minimal mechanical and physical properties testing and it's primarily say substance testing, but if I'm looking at what most of our customers are paying, it tends to be in a region of about 1500 USD. Now, you can't, I can't really give any accurate uh, testing quote because that's 
depends entirely on on the type of toy, the age group, its complexity in terms of different parts, moving parts, components, removable parts, and so on. So there's no real standardized testing cost when it comes to E and 71 testing. Okay, so that's a brief introduction to uh, E and 71 uh, as standards or a set of standards and how you can get started with the testing procedure. If you have questions about uh, EN71 testing, then I recommend that you type in your question, when you write a question in the articles, uh, sorry, in the comment section of the article, or if you are um, watching this on YouTube, then you can type in the comment uh, below the video. You can, of course, also subscribe to our Compliance Gate channel on YouTube. So thank you for watching.